that's cooking, Timberwolves. All right, so for this demo, we are going to be doing what I like to call donut muffins. Now, this is a recipe that I have not done in class yet. It's probably one of my favorites, though. My kids tend to love it as well. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever gone and gotten donut holes. This is like a cinnamon sugar version of that, okay? Um, for this recipe, it's a little bit more complicated, and um, at the end, there's a final step involving melted butter, so that becomes a little bit more risky for burns as well. So in my opinion, this is more of an intermediate type of recipe, okay? Um, for this recipe, it also yields 12 because you make smaller muffins so that you can get more cinnamon sugar in the space. Um, so you will need a bigger muffin tin. So I've got my 12 one here, um, and I will be using that for the recipe, okay? The other thing is that the recipe actually, and I'll show you it in a minute, the recipe calls for butter, but of course I'm going to use margarine because uh, it is less expensive and it's totally interchangeable in this recipe. There's no issues. Um, and for this recipe, actually, I will also be using regular flour instead of my gluten-free flour, um, but you can interchange the gluten-free flour if you would like. Okay, so this is the recipe. Again, this is gonna be up on 365. Um, it is a little bit longer. There's more steps to it, of course. Um, and it's not too bad as far as uh, difficulty goes, okay? All right, so we will be starting off, of course, by washing our hands. We'll wash our hands for 20 seconds. You guys know how much I love washing hands. And again, I am going to make sure that my water is hot. I am going to put my hands underneath um, and count 20 seconds, take ABCs, twinkle, twinkle, little star, make sure I've got all good to go. towel that I'm going to use to dry off my hands and I'm good okay and my hands again are clear I don't have any watches or any rings on or anything like that all right so I've got my equipment out for this one you are going to need a bunch of other bowls um, I will have two extra topping bowls that I'm going to use um, and I'll fill those at the end um, I also have a small bowl and a big bowl and then I've got my liquid measure, and I'm actually gonna use this as my melting um, device, basically. Um, now, for liquid measures, you wanna make sure that this one is microwavable, um, and I know that Pyrex is, so I'll be using this to melt my butter, because I'm gonna have to melt it twice, uh, two different amounts, all right? So, I've got my big bowl, and I'm gonna start off by mixing out my dry ingredients. And again, I'm using my trusty, uh, utility fork and spoon. I've got my uh, metal spatula, which I'm gonna use to level off. And again, you can use the back of a butter knife. I've got my rubber spatula. I've got my three um, measuring cups that I'm gonna be using for dry measure. Uh, and again, I've got the imperial that I've listed for this recipe as well, if you need it. Um, and then I, of course, have my measuring spoons, all right? So I'm gonna start off by doing 375 of flour. In order to get 375, I am going to add my 125 and my 250. And again, I'm going to heap and level off. Okay, so I've got that in there. To that, I'm just going to follow my muffin recipe or my muffin method which is basically to mix all my dry ingredients together, mix all my wet ingredients together, uh, and to be able to do that, okay? So after I've done my flour, I'm then going to do my sugar, and I will be using quite a bit of sugar in this recipe. It's a donut, we got to. Um, and so I'm gonna do my 125 to start. That's my kids playing in the background. baking powder and my salt. So for this recipe, I will be using seven milliliters of baking powder. So I'm gonna grab my five and my two. And then my salt, I have 
one milliliter. Alright, now for my flavor. I will be adding nutmeg to this as well as cinnamon, okay? Uh, and then I'll be mixing it all together using my fork. So for my cinnamon, I will be using three milliliters, which means I could do either um, one, two, and then half of the two, or I could do three ones. I've got options here. So I am gonna use my two on this one, and I'm gonna do one full two, and then half a two. And for my nutmeg, I will be using one milliliter of nutmeg. Nutmeg is awesome. I don't know if a lot of you guys have used nutmeg before. If you do not have nutmeg in your house, you don't absolutely need it for this recipe. You can just stick with cinnamon. And I'm gonna level off using my bag and mix it in. All right, once I've got all my dry ingredients mixed into this awesome bowl here, I am then going to take my fork and I'm just going to mix it all together and then create my well. So again, when we create a well, we wanna do something in the center that's basically like a hole. And I use the end of my fork for this, but I could also use my rubber spatula. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'm gonna start mixing together my liquids. Now, I have to do this in two different steps. I'm gonna first melt my butter, um, and then I'm going to add in my liquids, okay? Now, because I am melting my butter in here, um, what I'm actually gonna do first and foremost is I'm gonna measure out my milk first, put it into my bowl, and then melt my butter into this glass container, okay? I'm gonna be using regular milk for this. And again, three steps for my liquid measure. I'm gonna make sure I'm on a flat, stable surface. I'm gonna go down to eye level and I'm going to measure off my milk and it is 125 milliliters that I need. So I'm gonna go slightly above that line to allow for the meniscus, which is the dip down for liquids in containers. So once I've got my 125, okay, I am then gonna add it into my bowl and that's when I'm going to get my milk and I'm going to start to melt it. Oh, my milk, my butter. Oh my gosh, it's been a long day. Okay, so I'm gonna do 75 milliliters of margarine, all right? Now, usually at school, I measure this out for you guys, but you do not have that benefit here at home. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just take my parquet uh, and I'm going to take my 25 and I'm going to scoop it out using this 25, okay? So anytime that you measure soft fats, um, anything that's like solid at room temperature but could melt, um, you always want to make sure you use a dry measure to do that. When I'm scraping out my uh, butter, what I'm actually going to do is put my finger behind my uh, measuring spoon and that's just to make sure that I don't bend this back and break it. Okay, um, and now I might get butter on my hands or margarine on my hands. It's okay. Again, we're going to get messy here. Okay, so I'm just going to end up scraping this. And as I do this, I'll have this amount, right? It's a, a heaping amount. Now with uh, soft fats like this and with brown sugar, we use a method called packing, which I'm hoping you guys remember. And basically what I'm going to do is press it down with my metal spatula to make sure I've got all the margarine that I'm going to need. Anything excess, I am just going to put it back into my margarine tub. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat in the background too. My whole family wants to get in on this. Okay, so once I've got it into my 25, I'm then gonna scrape up, and you should be able to scrape this up all in one chunk. Okay, and that's how you know that you have uh, gotten it out of your, uh, you packed it properly, okay? So I do have just a small amount left over. I am gonna scrape that in, so that's 25. Fifty. 
and 75. And you guys can probably hear my kids talking. They are still alive, which I feel like is pretty good at this point. Okay, so I've got it all in there. I am gonna save this because I'm gonna need this still because we have another amount and I'm gonna heat this up in my microwave. When I heat this up, I'm only gonna do it in 20 to 25 second increments because if I put this all in at once and if I heat it up to say like 50 because I want it to be truly melted, what'll end up happening is it'll explode in my microwave, okay? So I wanna heat it up in smaller increments so that it fully melts and I do not have a mess in my microwave. So I'm gonna heat that up to start, okay? And in my liquid bowl, basically what I can then add is my egg. Now, ultimately I would love for my egg to be at room temperature for this recipe, only because I am gonna be adding in the butter to my egg. And if I add my uh, butter, which is gonna be hot-ish, hopefully you'll allow it to cool down just a little bit, um, to a really cold egg, I'll end up cooking it. So I actually wanna make sure that I've got my egg at room temperature. If you didn't do that, you're gonna be fine. Um, but I am gonna add in my egg to this bowl. I'm gonna come back to my microwave. Okay, so I have it melted. What you'll find with margarine is that it melts much faster than butter. Okay, so I'm good to go here. I'm gonna let it cool, hopefully for just a little bit. If I wanted to, I could put it in the fridge for a couple of seconds and then add it into the recipe. I just don't want this to go solid again. That's my goal, okay? So I've got my milk. I'm gonna add in my egg, and again, if I'm not very confident, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do my egg in like, say, another bowl, okay? But I'm, I'm pretty okay with this stuff. So I'm gonna crack my egg. Okay, so I've got my egg in there, and of course, if I get egg on my hands, I'm definitely going to wash my hands. first before I put it into my bowl. So I've got my egg, I've got my milk, I've got my vanilla, and then I'm going to put this into this melted margarine into this bowl, but I'm gonna slowly add it in and quickly stir. And again, I don't wanna cook my egg, I don't wanna curdle my egg, okay? chunks of egg, okay? So I've got my liquids, I've got my uh, dry mixture here. Okay, I'm actually gonna put my fork off to the side. I'm gonna grab my rubber spatula, all right? And I'm going to mix my um, wet into my dry. So just like any other muffin recipe, I wanna make sure I'm not over mixing. So again, my goal is eight to 10 times. should be thick and lumpy. All right, so I've got my batter ready to go. I'm gonna put my basil or my margarine <laughs> off to the side there and I'm gonna get myself ready. 
to bake these. Okay, now again, if you know that you're messy, what you can do is you can take your muffin tin liners and you can put them on your countertop and you can fill your muffin tins here or into your liners and then put them into your muffin tins and that's a way to keep your uh, muffin tins a little bit cleaner, it makes clean up a lot easier. I'm okay though, so what I'm actually gonna do is put my muffin tin liners in and if you don't have muffin tin liners, you can always spray down your muffin tins with spray, either Pam or any sort of pressurized spray. Um, that'll provide some oil to do non-stick. So I've got 12 there. And then I'm gonna grab my spoon. Now, instead of filling these two thirds of the way full, okay, my goal is actually to fill them halfway at most. I want smaller muffins. The reason why is because I want my surface area at the top um, to be smaller so that I get a lot of uh, muffin compared to cinnamon sugar topping. And this will, I'll show you guys when I actually dip, you'll see what I mean, okay? So I'm gonna take a spoonful and I'm just gonna start putting these in. And again, it's just going to be a smaller spoonful and then I'll add on. And I can already see that my baking powder is starting to work. I can see my air bubbles, okay? They're starting to form. It's awesome. So that I know my leavener is doing its job. And I'm using my finger to scoop out and to scrape with my spoon. Okay, and I find that this works the best. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, you can use a rubber spatula or whatever. And if you're one of those people that kind of doesn't like to touch the things they're cooking or baking, you can come up with other methods of doing stuff. But this is the one that I found just works best for me. So I'm going to make sure I'm even. And I wanna make sure I've got using all of my batter. There are no muffins left behind on this. tin because I do not want to bake that that way okay um, and I am now going to bake this okay so I just realized I did not preheat my oven all right so you guys hopefully were so much better than I was and you preheated I thankfully have been cooking with this so I should be fine and are good to go <laughs> but you see stuff like this happens okay and if that does end up happening if you prepared your muffins and you were like me and you totally forgot to preheat you'll be okay, all right? Um, in the recipe, I have said to do uh, 350 convect or 375 for bake. Um, so I will do um, 350 and I'm gonna start this and I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna get my dishes going in the meantime while I wait for this to preheat. Please make sure again that when you are preheating, you've got your racks in the right position. So for this recipe, I wanted to make sure I've got my second rack ready to go, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, I've got space and we're good to go. All right. So again, terribly sorry. I should have definitely preheated at the beginning. If I had been following my recipe, which I should have done, uh, that would have been like my first or second step. Okay. But what I'll end up doing is this, I'll skip over this part for you guys while I wait for the preheat. Um, I will be putting this in once my oven starts to beep. Um, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like when it comes out. And then the second um, method, which is the dipping method, okay? So uh, stay tuned. 